All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome to a game Sonic vs. So in this game taking place here on Tide Hunters. 1v1 matchup for you guys out there as Sonic has spawned as the blue Night Elf player on the bottom right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, So in spawning as the yellow orc. Um, first things first, get things out of the way. If you guys do have a free Amazon Prime subscription or would like to support the channel, definitely consider uh, subbing me here on Twitch. Um, it definitely does help out. I only ask because I recently got laid off and well, you know, every little bit helps, right? Every, every little bit helps. I'm, um, yeah, but th that's enough. I almost feel like I, I talk with you guys so much, the viewers and the listeners out there, for, for all of you guys who are first time viewers, thanks for stopping by. I'm usually not this emo or, or just you know, talk mainly focus about the game, but you know, big events in my life. Um, I, you know, I generally talk about them, birth of my children, um, things like that. So, uh, yeah, definitely, um, if you can support the channel, that'd be great. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and focus onto that game. A minute and a half of that talk is more than enough. Blade Master opening things up. There is a Barracks No Voodoo Lounge as of yet. Perhaps going to try and creep with a lone grunt first. Voodoo Lounge being built a little bit further away. So we'll try and clear out a green creep camp, pick up the item, and then heal, sell that Squirrel of Town portal, and pick up well, those healing salves and all of those necessary items. Meanwhile, Demon Hunter getting trained up here. Sonic getting up that second moon well and i've all like for those of you guys who haven't played night elf or don't know night elf builds you often need to go above your supply limit by quite a bit in the early stages something that like undead and human players don't really need to do they're, they're not trying to build additional supply depots for or farms um burrows or ziggurats to be able to heal that's just, you know, some of the intrinsic things in Warcraft 3 for this particular race. A little bit of racial identity and racial differences as the game gets underway. Meanwhile, off to the north here, Blademaster going after that giant sea turtle as expected. The Blademaster has that higher armor and has that heroic armor type, meaning that it takes less damage um, from piercing. As we're going to take a look, Blademaster does sell. Going to go ahead and healing salve there. There is a snapper nearby. Going to go ahead and lose aggro on that voodoo lounge. And well continue to move on his merry way blade master perhaps gonna try and get a, a strike in here there's a strike blade master there's a wind walk strike from the back both sides exchanging blows there's a mana burn onto the blade master no longer getting any more healing sub as the demon hunter is still just trying to knock down this voodoo lounge in this very forward portion of the um, of the map blade master able to get off a wind walk before that mana burn and uh, the mana burn did burn for 21 mana um but well it wasn't able to stop that wind walk there's an extra 40 bonus damage from that wind walk strike as the demon hunter looks to get away now all right back down to the southern side here gonna add in a little bit of damage onto that grunt as the demon hunter makes its way back all right, archers are getting trained up. We are teching to tier two. No big surprise here. 24 over 40 supply. Pretty much exactly what I, I, I mentioned earlier with those moon wells as the demon hunter now looks to retreat back. All right, a demon hunter looking a double backing around here. Going to get in some easy, easy damage. No, oh, trying to get a, uh, an attack onto that grunt, make it reset its healing and well, force another charge. Remember, each of those charges are, in fact, um, well, worth 33 gold. So every time you're trying to, you're able to apply or force a charge of, uh, a force a charge from that healing sap, it is a big deal. All right, Voodoo Lounge down to 99 hit points. It looks like it will get taken down. Demon Hunter having no problem shutting down this Voodoo Lounge here, doing a little bit of stutter step, and the Voodoo Lounge does fall. All right, well, what does that mean for the Orc player? He will be rebuilding that Voodoo Lounge as Sonic doesn't have much of an army anywhere else. The Demon Hunter is still sitting only at level one. And now the Demon Hunter going to perhaps go after the Giant Sea Turtles here. All right, Giant Sea Turtle with that piercing damage, trying to go after that Archer. You can see, well, even though it is 28 to 37 damage, it really isn't nearly that much just because of the armor types. Armor types making such a big difference if you guys haven't taken the time to actually study them. All right, 
coming back through. Blade Master sitting at level two. Demon Hunter, well, drops the circle of nobility, picks it back up. Gonna try and get those Murloc strikes here. Trying to get a volley of attacks. Oh, level two on the Demon Hunter. There's the mana burn. And, well, nicely done. I, I believe that two units died pretty much simultaneously. No, two units didn't die simultaneously. The Blade Master is still getting some, cre um, some experience from creeping in other locations. I think the Demon Hunter got all of that all of that experience or at least well enough to get to level two obviously as the demon hunter now makes his way off to the north blade master sitting at level two with dual rings of superiority doesn't have a circlet of nobility unlike the demon hunter thank you crota hype um as the ogre magi about to get taken down here Beastmaster. So Sonic going up with a Beastmaster as that second hero, and, and we'll find a Shadow Hunter here. Are we perhaps going to get a surround or a mana? We should at least see a mana burn on to that Shadow Hunter. Make sure it isn't able to cast as many spells later on as the Beastmaster getting in some quick kills and hits too. All right, we are looking at some Quill Beast wandering around here. Demon Hunter has gotten another mana burn onto that Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter now down to 169. Hasn't even chosen an ability as of yet as the beast master here considers his options and will be going after this enraged elemental creep camp demon hunter there's another mana burn again are we going to see a hex we are going to try and surround that demon hunter and the demon hunter is in fact surrounded there's another mana burn trying to maximize that is he going to be able to break free no a f perfect four unit surround as the demon hunter teleports back with 10 hit points Meanwhile, this is buying some critical time for the Beastmaster to get to level 2. But this is always something that, well, Night Elf players don't want to do, which is drain their moon wells just in time for daybreak. Well, there's still about an hour and a half to fill up those moon wells now. But is this going to set up for a timing issue on um, a timing attack by Soin? knowing when your opponent has very minimal mana in those moon wells to to do a, an attack and then two attacks during uh, an attack during the day to force a heal and then one more at attack um, a little bit before nightfall in order to prevent those moon wells from being able to offer any home field advantage in that healing we do see an ancient of wonders coming along we are getting up to tree of ages into tree of mastery which means that we are looking at cyclone all right, so Cyclone going to pick up these raiders, those grunts, these high supply units, take them out of the fight, trying to just divide and conquer. Meanwhile, using that magic damage, 11 to 13 magic damage against those grunts um, does work out extremely well. All right, Ancient of War living up to his name, going to be absorbing quite a bit of damage from the Null Wardens as the Hawk here to make sure that there is no Blade Master shenanigans all right ancient of war down to 350 hit points he's gonna try and continue to move along his merry way demon hunter about to get to level three meanwhile beastmaster about to get to level three as well they both may end up being just shy <coughs> excuse me they both end up being just shy perhaps they can pull down the units from the um, goblin laboratory and creep them on low ground all right, use of a moonstone, always important. Using that moonstone to prevent, um, yeah, time of day is zero, zero. I, I, think the, I think the overlay may actually cover um, the, a player's fork yeah, may actually that. cover the, that there. So it, it's not like an actually see-through window. So if I actually remove the overlay temporarily, you would actually see something different behind there right now. All right, Demon Hunter, Beastmaster getting ready to engage. We are really looking at, what, well, 937 um, during um, Daybreak. Yeah, I don't know. D uh, does Pad know about that? Mm. All right. Coming back through, Beastmaster sitting at level 2. Uh, Demon Hunter sitting at level 2. is the No, the Serpent War not going to give the necessary experience. Still about 17 experience shy there. We're going to be looking at the units coming in from the far side again. There is nothing blocking this spot here. And a Goblin Tinker as that third and final hero. So this is a very old school style strategy. Um, Demon Hunter, Beastmaster, Goblin Tinker. Goblin Tinker, remember that pocket factory that he throws down does in fact block the Blade Master. So that's one of the things that the Goblin Tinker can do. Create spacing out on the battlefield against what is normally a fast moving, um, a, a fast moving 
um, annoying uh, Blade Master just constantly wandering around here. All right, we're going to see some ensnares. There's some ensnares, and there's some disenchants, and here we are, here we go, getting ready into that fight. One due to the uh, Talon already taken down. Meanwhile, fights, Serpent Wards are being thrown down here. Archers are trying to pelt in from behind. There's that double level up. Demon Hunter up to level 3. Beastmaster up to level 3 as well. As we're looking at some Cyclones, are we going to perhaps pick up some lower hit point units trying to cause some problems as the Druids of the Talon able to force a little bit of an issue? There is another man burn and suddenly this well shadow hunter is gonna get surrounded and not be able to make its way out trying to well take down that one archer gonna force a scroll of town portal instead beastmaster gonna get exchanged though as we see a dire quill be still causing a bit of damage here due to the talent are they gonna able to get off a cyclone pick up a unit that is the question um just being able to take down a unit and well to or force a longer fight i'm surprised that the that well nope i guess they're not going to be able to do it no this one uh, drew to the talent perhaps got the command to do so but may have temporarily lost eyes on the target and because of that unable to finish it off all right goblin tinker still getting in some damage here demon hunter trying to chase down that's a plus 20 hitting demon hunter against a negative three armor uh, grunt plus damage over time the demon hunter would only need one or two shots easily to clear that all right shadow hunter uh, well, back at home, Beastmaster waiting to get resurrected. We are still waiting for nightfall. Timing, uh, well, that is, is still an hour, uh, in one in hour, one in game hour away from being nightfall. As we see, well, a very well reinforced expo already being established by Soen. So Soen needed to do what he did, um, or needed to do um, the things he needed to do there, put pressure. Um, didn't lose his heroes and and now needs to um, be able to just deal against druids of the talon with mana the big question is going to be these spirit walkers are they going to be able to stay alive remember they can't go into the ethereal form as the druids of the talon will deal bonus damage to them then and then the archers with their improved range 700 range are, are dealing large amounts of damage as well to their unarmored armor type without the spirit walkers then cyclone is able to just run amok and cause problems as the demon hunter there goes an ensnare there are we gonna see a cyclone no we are not but a little bit of well fairy fire orb of venom and as the units are still continuing to engage again all right blade master well wandering around does have a potion of healing there is a hawk uh, no that no there is that hawk there the beastmaster does have a clarity potion importantly are we do we see a dire quill beast though no not yet um, really, the Beastmaster needs to summon up some more um, other other units out here on the battlefield. And where is this going to go next? All right. So for all of you guys who enjoy Warcraft 3 math, if you want more usefulness out of your Ring of Regeneration, more effective hit points on higher armor units is better as each point of armor on uh, each effective hit point on a higher um armor hero is well just more effective in general all right continuing the fight continuing to engage demon hunter gets teleported back home with the staff of preservation there's the engage raiders are now trying to dive on in here as serpent wards are going to poke all right there's some repairs uh, what is going to end up happening the repairs are going to be difficult is it going to be enough no it is not and now well the demon hunter is still trying to make its way through are we going to see another manor burn no we do not there we see a quick run by with the scroll of speed and now uh, what, can, what can happen here? Demon Hunter can go after these two grunts, but at what cost? The Expo could end up getting taken down. Demon Hunter going after the targets here. One grunt now down to 23 hit points. One shot is going to finish him off. Another one is going to finish him off. So that's six supply gone as the Raiders are now diving in onto that Tree of Life. Massive repairs were underway until the Wisp quickly got ensnared. Scroll of Town Portal to get away. And well, well timed there, trusting in your raiders to get the job done, finishing off that tree of life. And Soen is playing in such a big, uh, well, su such an annoying way that orc players well can do and execute easily with pillage, with scroll of town portal, with scrolls of speed. They can easily run into any non, um, well, any outpost that isn't defended enough and just quickly take it down. And now, continuing to get a, a gold advantage 
over his opponent. Coming back around, you can take a look at this. There isn't a quick ensnare there. Demon Hunter can still can push onto that Voodoo Lounge. And what is going to be the uh, the response? The Raiders are going to just dive in and force a cancellation on that Tree of Life. Manor Burn inbound onto that Spirit Walker. Just waiting for it, waiting for it. Come on, you're right there. There you go. Two, um, big damage there as, well, Druids of the Talon trying to go after um, Orc Burrows. Piercing damage, magic damage going up against Fortified Armor. You can imagine that this is not going well. Um, and, and this is just him trying to do um, do something. Coming back around, the Raiders of Sonic are now going to go ahead and attempt to take down a Moonwell or two. There's some Spirit Walkers. There's some positioning. And here we are. Here we go. And into the straight up fight. All right. Spirit Walker quickly. Well, Spirit Link spreading out that damage. All right. This is all in a front line spot. Blade Master, Potion of Invulnerability used already as the Beast Master continuing to fight their way through. Pocket Factory was placed down. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Minimizing the surface area on that army by placing down a building right there. And, and allowing all of these range units to still do their thing. They're able to slip through here and take a look. A good portion of the army is up in the air. 66 supply compared to 43, but the army size advantage may still be too much by Solon. Sonic does have a little bit of home field advantage here, continuing to put pressure. Raiders are getting taken down, and uh, and still some Raiders are still up in the air. There's another mana burn here, a potion of healing by the Demon Hunter, trying to stay alive, trying to keep this all together here. And, well, we're going to be looking at a couple of Serpent Wards get taken out as well, as this one Raider, well, still up in the air, invulnerable, waiting for it to come down. And is it going to end up falling down here? No, it is. It is not going to get felled. The Raider, with his high movement speed, still able to retreat back. All right, so Soen is doing, uh, well, a hit and runs on Sonic, just kind of playing with him like a lion, like a lion might play with his food, pretty much biting him and then backing away um, resting up while his prey is just slowly bleeding to death. Um, but we have seen comebacks in Warcraft 3 here. A Gargantuan Sea Turtle going to get taken out. There's Goblin Tinker getting up to level 2. Potion of Invulnerability. That will be a big item in indeed for that Demon Hunter um, as well. Meanwhile, Beastmaster, all of these units, they need to figure out um, what and how they're going to do what they're going to do next. 43 supply army compared to 46. The army sizes are actually fairly even. Um, that is an important thing to note. The army sizes are fairly even. Druids of the Talon, however, are not maxed out on mana. And, well, units are off on the move again. Raiders are going to be trying to put in pressure. That is Raiders and Spirit Walkers. No real big normal damage to deal with those Raiders. We do see some Fairy Dragons up in the air. Those are most likely going to get ensnared down quickly as in comes the attack now. All right, economic advantage may become too much. There is a, the, the Fairy Dragons up in the air. They're going to try and engage Demon Hunter off to the side here. Potion of Invulnerability would have been nice on him. Already used a Potion of Healing. A Goblin Tinker is holding on to it. It's going to get ensnared. And Sonic, perhaps having the wrong item on that frontline Demon Hunter, losing that Demon Hunter and all of that damage output um, could have been the difference. Perhaps give the Potion of Invulnerability to the Demon Hunter first, and then while he's invulnerable, then you can also transfer the Potion of Healing later as well. Soin does play pretty much playing with Sonic for quite a bit. The final score is not really showing that as big of a difference as the game would suggest. Let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments below.